dead die from now on in the Lord, the Spirit says. Yes, they will rest from their hard work, and the reward of all they have done stays with them. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. The only way to the Father is through me. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will have life, even if they die. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the beauty of the heavenly bodies is one kind, and the beauty of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of beauty, the moon has another beauty, and the stars have another. And each star is different in its beauty. It is the same with the dead who are raised to life. The body that is planted will ruin and decay, but it is raised to a life that cannot be destroyed. Let us pray. God, our eternal creator, you have blessed us with the wonders of life and the sweetness of loved ones. Renew your assurance to each of us that you have prepared an immortal home for all those who love you. Gracious Lord, we know that you sustain us with your Holy Spirit to give us courage. Bestow your holy comfort upon each loved one. To God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit our sister in the name of our Redeemer. Amen. The fragile beauty of the flowers will perish, but the principles of faith, love, purity, justice, and truth will abide forever. A single star sparkles new, set in heaven. Good morning, peace, yeah, good morning. I'll take a breath. Peace to all of you who gathered here today to celebrate the life of our dear friend, Pat. When David and I were asked to share a few words today, we felt honored and inadequate to that task. I'm shaking. Uh, not because I don't want to talk about Pat, but what an amazing woman. And she's so amazing, and I had so many different thoughts and feelings. I'll confess it's glued together. We could hear Pat's voice encouraging us and believing in us. She was always really good about that. And really, who could tell Jim or Pat, no? <laughs> Did you try? <laughs> <It> just... <laughs> <laughs> Ryan said yes. Uh, that's great. <laughs> These words will merely be a rough sketch in trying to convey the impact that Pat had on the world. These words, connector, role model, enthusiast, a visionary, a student, a cheerleader, supporter, champion, friend, musical and theatrical performer and supporter of the arts, philanthropist, donor, and of course, wife, mother, grandmother, sister, and so on. These are those words that come to mind when thinking about Pat. And in reading the obituary, you can see how she was at the center of many good deeds done in and around Winterset. The author, Brene Brown, has said, connection is why we're here. It's what gives purpose and meaning to our lives. She goes on to say that I define connection as the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, heard, and valued. 
when they can give and receive without judgment, and when they derive sustenance and strength from the relationship. I think Pat embodied Brene's words, those notions of connection and relationships. Looking around this morning, I can tell that many of you feel the same way, seen and valued by Pat. Pat was one of the first people to connect with Elaine and me when we came to St. Paul Lutheran. She didn't approach us in an overpowering way. She approached us in a caring way, communicating that she saw us and wanted to know more about us. When she looked at you, you knew she was really looking at you and that she was present with you. I know this was part and parcel of who Pat was. When I started thinking about the memories I have of Pat, one of the first things that came to my mind was how she was a connector. Not only did she personally connect with people, but she also made connections between people. If she thought that two people or two couples would enjoy each other, she made it a point to introduce them and to do things with them socially. <laughs> right, Lisa and Daryl? <laughs> I can remember several dinners like this where we got to meet others and even a weenie roast once in their backyard. Others have expressed similar feelings about Pat and the memories they have shared with us and through social media. One story that was shared was that when they first came to town, they attended different churches. This individual said that nothing felt as right as the day we attended St. Paul and this wonderful woman approached me. There was something about her that I knew was special even before I knew anything about her. I am sure there are many of us who, would, who could share those feelings as well. Over the years, I have learned so much about her and what a great person she was. There, was, there were many things that she gave great insight and wisdom to. Her love for people was ever present. Another person shared that Pat was such a generous soul who shared her talents, compassion, and love with so many. She was a friend and mentor who inspired us all to work for the greater good. Her passing is felt deeply in our community, but her inspiration lives on through the hearts of those she has impacted. She was really curious and caring. She tuned in to what you were saying, what you cared about. You mattered. It was always clear that she valued people, all people, not just a certain kind of people, everybody. She didn't tell people how to act. She showed us how to be a worker with God in the kingdom of heaven, as you know those words from our baptisms here. Her impact in so many of our lives was indelible. Again, we've heard from so, so many people, uh, she changed my life. I really mean that. People say that, but she really did. And um, I wouldn't be in this role if not for Pat. Pat's life was one of service to others. Looking at her obituary, you could see that that was really truly there, that service. Her life was not about her. I don't know if I ever heard Pat feel sorry for herself or have a pity party. If she did, she didn't invite me. Uh, her wants and desires seem primarily focused on the welfare of others and for the fullness of experiencing life in all of its beauties. People of all ages and the talents they possessed, she drank in theater and musical performances from the small stages of preschool graduations to Broadway musicals or the symphony. So my point is that she really did true to truly seem to live her life oriented toward these goals of improving the lives of others through her mental health advocacy, through her philanthropic work, through her networking to maximize the impact of the talents and gifts of individuals and resources of cities, organizations, counties. You know, an image came to mind of Pat living her life working a puzzle. Like she'd see all of you and all your gifts and talents and she had this puzzle in mind of see a need, fill a need. See a heart, connect a heart. A puzzle for the glory of God, for the fulfillment of human potential. Micah 6, 8, one of my favorites, says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To do justice and to love mercy and walk humbly with your God. Pat fulfilled that requirement through her everyday life. She worked for justice, I mean, you saw her do it, practiced compassion and mercy for everyone, and was humble and other-focused her whole life.
She was genuinely interested in what others were about, what they were interested in. She showed a curiosity for what others were doing, asking them to tell her about their interests and their activities. This was one of many ways in which Pat let you know you were seen, heard, and valued. Pat had a special place in her heart for individuals who struggle with mental health issues. She used her many talents, including her ability to connect with people to provide support for these individuals. She was actively engaged with NAMI, providing education to families and others, and helping those who found themselves with a mental illness. Jim shared with us over the past couple of weeks that he and Pat connected early on an emotional level. They both had some similar experiences growing up, which made them highly compassionate and empathetic people. I think we would all agree with that. Jim shared that Pat's early experiences made her a champion for the underdog, and Pat's compassion, empathy, and desire to be a champion for the underdog were evident in her life and in the contributions she made to the community. Um, hopefully, or maybe you don't know, but they met in school. They were very young when they met, Jim and Pat. Uh, another thing that she was was a student. She was bright. Did you know that she skipped second grade? She was so advanced. Yeah, no one's surprised, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. She was so advanced that when her family moved from Corning to Prescott, they advanced her a grade. A lifelong learner, Pat showed a near insatiable appetite for being informed, reading the local and regional papers and tuning into news radio all the time. I think she left it on for her cats, so her cats are especially educated as well. <laughs> Uh, she studied candidates and policies she paid attention to and championed or defended local issues for Madison County and Winterset. She wanted to learn more from you, and she did, about your job and your interests. She kept up with technology and culture. She was always so hip, um, in the know and energetic. She seemed ageless. Back to the lovebirds. Hmm. It was her third grade year that Jim first saw her. Can't you just see it in a movie? Hmm. She was standing on a box and singing with her sister, he said. Neither of them could imagine at the time, of course, that God had in store for them an epic love story that would span decades and inspire many of us, kind of show us how to do it. In Prescott, such a small rule school district, Jim and Pat shared a classroom in the fourth and fifth grades. Jim in the fifth, Pat in the fourth. Was it there that the friendship started? It was Jim's sophomore year and Pat's freshman year that they started dating. She had attended the Methodist Church in Prescott and they put on a Halloween party there at the church. Jim drove his 47 Chevy. Was it down? to Prescott um, that Halloween and he later learned that she had arranged to sit next to him. Mm-hmm. Pretty sweet. <laughs> oh, just so, so, so adorable. Their relationship was long distant for two years while Jim started pharmacy school at Iowa and Pat finished high school and then her associate's degree. They married in 1957. You have to check out those pictures back there of the young bride and groom. Their love grew and grew. Jim and Pat had an amazing relationship. They respected each other, supported and championed each other's endeavors and passions, and they learned to give each other space when it was needed. Jim shared with us that he learned along the way that Pat didn't like being asked, are you ready to go? <laughs> He's a bright man too, so <laughs> uh, he said, I learned to stop asking that question and instead to let her know, I'll be out in the car. They adored each other. They held hands, they smooched, and celebrated each anniversary like theirs was a newfound love. I know, they're too cute. Again. It's clear that the hybrid of their empathy and generosity took root in their children. Each of you Nelson kids and grandkids have been so welcoming and tolerant of the stray cats like our family that Jim and Pat have brought into your home. Thank you. Pat, the mother, oh, how she loved each and every one of you, fiercely and unconditionally. So proud of the good people you are, your talents and accomplishments, the love you share for one another. It's hard to read with tears in your eyes. Uh, she had fun with you and cherished you 
I loved hearing stories about how she sang to you as children and washed your sleepy faces with a cheery, good morning eyes. Not adorable. In her final days, she basked in the sounds of life and laughter in the house beyond her cozy bedroom. She wanted that door open so that she could savor the sounds, so delightful, so delighted in hearing the favorite voices, Jim's, her BFF and life partner, and those of her children and grandchildren. She would chuckle when they bickered in their familiar ways, smiling with their eyes closed, her heart full. Winterset and Madison County are better for having had Pat in the community. We're all better people for having known Pat. She was definitely someone who saw, heard, and valued people. May we all learn from Pat's model and be curious and caring about those around us. May we be more like Pat and find those places in our communities where we can make a difference, make things better for others. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that, that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Patricia K. Nelson, 84, entered Rest Eternal January 6, 2023, at her home in Winterset, Iowa. She was the mother of three adopted and one biological child, and because of her kind and gentle heart, there were numerous others who adopted her and called her their mother or grandmother. Pat was born to Dan and Marie Stowell Ryan on April 19, 1938. She had two sisters, Betty and Joy. The three talented women sang as the Ryan sisters trio for many years for town celebrations, weddings, funerals, and other community events. Pat continued singing as a member of St. Paul Lutheran Church's choir for 62 years as well as many other occasions when asked. 
Pat graduated in 1956 from Prescott High School and then went to college at Commercial Extension in Omaha, Nebraska, where she received an associate's degree in secretarial science. After college, she moved to Iowa City and started working as secretary to the treasurer of the University of Iowa. In 1957, Pat married Jim, her high school sweetheart. At that time, Jim was a pharmacy student at the University of Iowa, and Pat worked hard to finance his last two years of college. They had recently celebrated their 65th anniversary last August. After Jim graduated, they moved to Winterset, Iowa, and there Pat worked as a secretary for several years for Winterset's Department of Human Services before moving on in the advertising department at the Madisonian newspaper. In the late 60s, Pat encouraged Winterset to form a group to celebrate the Madison County Covered Bridges, thus starting the Covered Bridge Festival. Pat created the adverti advertising for the festival, and many of the events for the celebration were her idea, such as the spelling bee, king and queen, local talent on the courthouse steps, and the demonstrations of life in the 1800s. Her next adventure was Pat's Ideas and Images. She did copywriting, advertising, and promotions for local companies and retail stores. She also sold advertising novelties, such as hats, pens, and personalized gifts for Newton Manufacturing through her company. Pat organized a group of locals to form a community theater called the Apple Tree Players that performed many musicals and plays in town. She then coordinated a group called Festivals of Iowa, which helped Iowa towns celebrate their own history and promote tourism in Iowa. Her next adventure, her next endeavor, was her business married in Madison County. Celebrating the Book of Bridges of Madison County, she offered her services to plan and organize 480 weddings at the bridges. Pat also formed the committee to plan and celebrate Winterset's ses sesquicentennial celebration and served as a chairperson for that committee. Her most recent accomplishment was the formation of the Women's Giving Circle. This group now has over 130 members and has raised over $250,000 for women and children in Madison County. Pat was very active in the National Alliance on Mental Illness. She taught the Family to Family course, supporting family with mental illness in the home in Winterset and Des Moines. Pat was a good listener for those with mental health issues touching many lives with her love and compassion. Pat also had a passion for promoting Winterset and Madison County. She has enjoyed being a step-on tour guide for the Chamber of Commerce, giving guided tours for buses, parks, and other historical sites in Madison County. In 1981, Pat was the first female to receive the Citizen of the Year Award from the Madison County Chamber of Commerce. And then in 2008, she received the Lifetime Achievement Award for the many contributions she gave to our community throughout the years. For 50 years, Pat was a very active member of the chapter AGPEO, having been a past president as well as holding several offices. She served on several committees and especially took great pleasure in helping women receive low interest loans to continue their education. Pat was an active member at St. Paul Lutheran Church, singing in the choir for 62 years, serving on the church council, which included being appointed council president, chairperson of the Memorial Fund Committee, and a member of the worship committee for several years. Pat was a loving wife, mother, grandmother, and friend to so many. She is survived by her husband of 65 years, Jim, her sister, Joy, 
and her husband, Bob Maury. Is that correct? Daughter, Stephanie Nelson. Sons, James, Scott, George Nelson, and Ryan, Maggie Nelson. Grandchildren, Ashley Nelson, Bill, Mariana Landis, Daniel, Sarah Landis, Haley Stoneberger, Colton Stoneberger, and James M. Nelson, and two great-grandchildren, Alyssa Ashley Nelson and Natalie Bill Landis. She was preceded in death by her parents, her sister, Betty Krill, and her daughter, Kirsten Nelson. My goodness, did she ever have time to rest? <laughs> Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We have gathered here this morning to celebrate the life of Patricia K. Nelson known to all who knew and loved her simply as Pat. And as we celebrate and give thanks to God for giving her to us to know and to love, and while we remember, we grieve the loss of her presence among us, and at the same time, we give thanks to God. After all, a funeral is, first and foremost, a service of praise and worship in thanksgiving to God for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so we have come here to commend Pat to God's eternal care and keeping as it is promised to us in Scripture. Eternal life given to us through the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, it is death that brings us all here together this morning. But we come here to witness to our faith and to the faith of Pat. We come to praise God and to proclaim the reality of the resurrection. Now, you know, I, will, I like to weave, I met with the family, I like to weave some of these stories into my message, and you've already heard some of them, unfortunately, but I think you will delight in hearing them again, because maybe I'll tell them a little different. <laughs> so to start with, I would just like to share an old story with you. It's a pretty old one, I think. It's about a fellow who was not very handsome at all, and he fell with fell in love with a young woman, a beautiful young woman. But he was positive that she would not be interested in him. And so with the help of a surgeon-type doctor, he had a special mask designed, a very handsome mask. And then when it was placed over his face, he had a handsome new look. And guess what? He easily won over that beautiful woman that he loved and they were married. But many years later, she discovered the trick and asked him to remove it. When he peeled off the mask, what was underneath was a very handsome face. After all those years, his natural face had been transformed into the likeness of the mask. You'll get it yet, Jim. Just hang on. <laughs> Pat's death occurred on Epiphany Day, the day we celebrate God's glory revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. Like the light of the star that guided the Magi to Jesus, the light of Christ reveals who we are, children of God, who are claimed and washed in the waters of baptism, and we are sent out to be beacons of light, sharing the good news of God's love to all people. The Christian life, from baptism to death, is a journey of being changed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. There's a hymn that, that I don't know if we've sung it here recently or not, called Love Divine, All Love Excelling. And the words go like this, changed from glory into glory, 
till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. Changed from glory into glory begins at baptism, the moment we put our whole trust in the grace and love of Jesus Christ is the moment that we begin that transformation. From that moment on, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. Our transformation then continues as we gradually understand our life's meaning in our journey. And what a journey Pat had, huh? Wow. Her life was spent the way Jesus has commanded us to live. Love one another as I have loved you. Always wanting to lift people up and encourage them to do better, she would always set examples of how we can be better people. Her and Jim's door was always open to folks who were in need. And as Ryan put it, I love this term, Pat was aggressively passive. (laughs) (laughs) And she never wanted the recognition for all of those many ways that she went about following Jesus in her everyday walking around life. Pat was a gentle lady a gentle lady who loved and cared about people. Throughout her lifetime, the number of people whose lives she touched is indeed innumerable. Beginning in those very early years, singing with her sisters, and if I understood it correctly, even with the Everly Brothers? Yeah. Who knows who the Everly Brothers are? Oh, good. (laughs) up until the day she took her last breath. Even as folks came for one last visit, she left her mark of care on all who touched her life. Now, I haven't known Pat long, several months. I'm so glad I had the opportunity to know her, even if it was just for such a short time. I wish I had known her longer. And as I visited with Jim and some of the family Wednesday afternoon, I learned more about Pat that isn't in her obituary. You've already heard, but I'm going to say it again. Jim first spotted the love of his life when Pat was about eight years old. She stood on a box, and I could relate to that because I stand on boxes a lot. (laughs) She stood on a box singing with her sisters. And then first met officially in grade school. Friends, through all the years, things got serious that evening that Jim got the car and drove over there to the Methodist Church in Prescott, and Pat had arranged the seating. And so it began. Pat was beautiful inside and out. Perhaps her never leaving the house without her face on had something to do with it. But I believe, I believe it was the light of Christ shining through her. Even though I understand, as was told to me, she didn't want to subject anyone to looking at her legs. So she never went swimming. And I think they would have been just as beautiful as the rest of her. Pat was young at heart. She was an instigator who created enthusiasm that made you 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 just want to be involved whenever she said, we should do whatever followed, we should do. She was a Pied Piper of sorts, really, whether it was for tourism or creating events or simply sharing her everyday joy or even driving go-karts with her grandsons. And now, 65 years later, Jim, 65 years later, after you and Pat spoke those vows of love on your wedding day, we have come to a time such as this. (laughs) 
I asked the family to tell me about the carousel horses in Jim and Pat's home. And I learned how much Pat loved them and had always wanted a carousel horse. And then Stephan Stephanie went on in, to share that in part of the conversation she'd had in the last days with Pat. That Pat had said to her, of course, when I finally get a carousel horse, I die. <laughs> a comment that makes us both laugh and cry at the same time. But Pat was ready. Pat was at peace. Pat knew the end of her earthly journey was close. And, and we knew it too. But nevertheless, when death occurs, it always comes at such a shock, even when it's expected. Because we are never fully prepared for the pain that it causes, the grief we feel, and the separation it brings. And now, now there's an empty spot, there's a break in the family cycle, and we grieve. We grieve while we celebrate the gift of Pat, and, and what a gift Pat was. From the beginning to the end of life, we have come full circle once more. Our lives are full of circles. After all, we call birth a beginning and death an ending. Yet, it is a continuous circle marked by all of the events along the way. Pat's life began April 19, 1938 and ended January 6, 2023. But in that ending is Pat's beginning. Pat's beginning of the promise of life eternal. For so many of us, it is indeed hard to, hard to imagine not having Pat in our midst. But as I said, I know Pat was at peace. We had conversation about it. Pat was ready to make this transition. She was looking forward to it. She was looking forward to this transition to complete the circle of life in her earthly journey and begin again in her eternal home. Pat was such a big part of your lives and was a part of all the many people whose lives she touched throughout her life. And now Pat has left you with a lifetime of memories, a treasure of love and stories stories to tell and share. So I always like to say, hold on to those stories. Hold them in your hearts and bring them out. Anytime you gather together, bring them out and laugh together and cry and remember with joy and with love and just keep telling those stories and keep them fresh and alive through all the years of retelling, through all the generations to come. And so yes, a funeral is, first and foremost, a service of praise and worship and thanksgiving to God for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But it's also a time of remembering, reframing, and returning. We know from reading Pat's obituary that she was many things to many people. But the most significant thing about Pat was really not in her obituary or in the stories we share. The most significant thing about Pat is she was a child of God. So let us remember Pat's baptism and how the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ reframes her own death, knowing that death does not have the last word, but that life and resurrection is what is promised to Pat and to all of us. And finally, we are here to return Pat in trust to the one from whom she came, to the God who created and formed her. We, tr we entrust Pat to God who so loved the world, who so loved us that he gave his only son that we might have life. 
Do not be afraid, Jesus said. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Because Christ has conquered death, we have no need to fear death. Because through Christ, we too conquer death. And this is the promise for those who love God, that from the day of our baptism through our life's journey and sufferings until our transformation is completed. Like the fellow who stripped off his mask to find a handsome face underneath, at death, Christians awake to find the human mask stripped away. And what is underneath? A soul transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ, from glory into glory, is now finished. Our transfiguration, our transformation, complete. Changed from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before him lost in wonder, love, and praise. And so as you laugh and you cry and you share with each other in this great loss you have experienced, hear the words of promise and affirmation for Pat, child of God. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. And so together, let us say thanks. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for the life of Patricia K. Nelson. Amen. Let's stand if you're able.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, Give courage and faith to all who mourn, and assure and certain hope in your loving care that, casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy. Grant to us who are still on our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior, Jesus Christ, destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead and in whom our hope of resurrection dawns. The sting of death has been removed by the glorious promise of his risen life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated. And I would just like to um, invite everyone is welcome. All are welcome at the Lord's table here. We do have gluten-free available. If you have that need, just let me know, and um, we'll have that for you. We will um, kind of take uh, each row on either side to come forward and then go around that way, and we'll um, go through it.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us commend Pat to the mercy of God, our Maker and our Redeemer. Okay. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Patricia K. Nelson. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Please stand and join in singing our recessional song, Picked by Pat. And then... Please join the family for lunch.